In this tutorial, you will learn some tips for designing online courses. We will explore the onlineization template we use for designing courses on the Macquarie University e-learning environment, Mwele. And we shall uh, look at the planning template that we use for our blended courses before we upload them into Mwele. So let us go through a few slides together. Online course design uh, is rooted in the same solid principles of face-to-face -face teaching that requires additional considerations. And it's the additional considerations that we'll be considering uh, in this presentation. And in designing online course, you normally would consider the same pedagogic principles of overall course design. And in that sense, a course should normally enable students to use their strong backgrounds to solve problems. In other words, problem solving should be part of your course design. The course should also focus beyond the final exam to add to students' future lives, their abilities and their skill sets and prepare them to think for themselves in the discipline even after the course is over. So in our design of courses, we are designing beyond the course itself. We are designing for the workplace, the 21st century workplace for that matter. The course should also provide opportunities for students to practice thinking for themselves in the discipline so that they will be prepared to continue thinking even when the course is over. Now, there are some principles for course design, general course design, both the traditional, but we will also borrow from these principles uh, to guide our design of the online courses. And the first is the course context, the course context. And in the course context, the instructor should be thinking about what to ask the students to do, and why they're asking the students to do so. But you should also be mindful about the size of the course, the student uh, demography, and the support structure for the students as they go through the course. Secondly, is setting overarching uh, course goals that are student uh, focused, and that should enable the students to think for themselves within the course discipline. We should also uh, be thinking of setting skills goals, goals that should enable the students to develop or improve certain skills. For example, if you are developing or designing a writing course, one of the skills goals should be to help the students to improve their writing ability or their writing skills. The fourth principle for the course design process would be to choose content to achieve the overarching goals that you will have set earlier in the course design process. Selecting content topics that are within the goals, not too broad and, and, and meandering around the, the course goals, but should be straightforward. Number five, is choosing and developing appropriate assignments and assessments that help students to learn effectively and allow the instructor to evaluate whether the students have met the goals. So these assignments and assessments could be both formative and they could be summative, but they should be integrated in the course design process. Lastly, in the principles is to develop a course plan. And this course plan covers all the five aspects that we have talked about earlier, the goals, the topics, the ordering of the content, the assignments and the assessments that the students should be completing in order to achieve the course goals or the learning outcomes that you have set in the beginning. Now let's turn our attention to online course design. What does it involve? Now, just like we have the principles for general course design, which we borrow from for online course design as well, but this time in online course design, the course layout, the pacing of the course, the delivery, 
of the content and the assignments, whether they're summative or formative, will usually be tailored for online course delivery. Therefore, the online course designer should aim for less content overall, involving a variety of methods to deliver course content and an emphasis on projects, case studies, experiential learning, and other forms of engaging assignments. In other words, you want to ensure that when you are designing an online course, you have activities that engage the students in their learning, that cause the students to, to come into the learning and are able to learn to achieve their own personal learning outcomes, but also to achieve the course uh, learning goal. So aim for less content, but employ a number of methods to engage the students in the course. Uh, secondly, structure the course to create a community. That's what we call a learning community. Online uh, learning sometimes can feel very lonely. And you find that if there is no community created in, in an online environment, a number of students will feel lonely and they will kind of drop out of the course. So we use a number of tools to create this learning community. For example, blogging activities, uh, activities that involve the students in team and collaborative work and project work, and various opportunities to share their personal narratives. For example, you can uh, create discussion forums and add topics for discussion in the forums, or sometimes even give the students leeway to add topics for discussion that are related to the course. And within those discussion spaces, they can share their understanding of the course concepts, they can ask questions, they can receive feedback from both the, the uh, fellow learners and from the instructors as well. And when you structure your course in that way, that community helps the students to carry on. It keeps them motivated, it keeps them engaged, and it keeps them going. And at the end, you will find that you will retain more students when you create that sense of community. You structure your course for community. Community. You also want to ensure that all instructions for the course are written in great detail before the course starts and in a language that is simple to understand. And that's what happens in, 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 in a number of online courses. You find that the content is created before the course starts. So everything needs to be in place. Your learning goals, the learning activities and the tasks that the students are meant to complete, the pacing of, of, of the course when uh, the assignments are supposed to be submitted. The instructions should be clear. Even how the students should complete and submit assignments, where they should submit those assignments, should be clear right uh, from the beginning. Uh, in that way, the, the students will be able to move seamlessly uh, through the course. And you can supplement those written instructions with video instructions uh, as well. Create short videos with instructions uh, for the students. It helps to motivate them. It helps to keep them uh, engaged in their learning. You must also consider your course goals and your course plan very early in the design uh, process. Now, we want to look at the options for communicating online course content. Certainly, they, you'll find a few differences here and there in the way that traditional course content is communicated. So what are some of the options? One, in, in our course design, you in, include course readings, including textbooks, ebooks, articles, uh, websites, uh, essays, that the students are able to, 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 to read. You can include that in, in what we call the course uh, folder. You can upload those materials there, or sometimes you can add links to where that specific information is to help uh, your students to easily find the course content that they need. You also can communicate course content in form of written material that you type yourself. We sometimes call those mini lectures. When you're designing an online course, the course designer or instructor writes up some mini uh, lectures that are tailored to specific activities within the course. You write it 
in the first person language as though you were you know standing in front of the class and teaching only this time it is in written form so we call those uh, mini uh, lectures you can create video lectures with yourself talking about a topic or you can uh, find some open source uh, video lectures related to the, your, your course or the subject that you're addressing at that particular point in time. You can also have PowerPoint slides that the students can review and, and read that you have developed in line with the topics of your course. You can have narrated PowerPoint slides with a voiceover like this particular one that I'm doing. These are PowerPoint slides that I have created and I'm doing a voiceover over the slides here. You can do visualizations, interactive media, and simulations as you find relevant to your uh, course. But you can also add posts to the discussion forums that you create within the units in your course. It's particularly useful for correcting misconceptions or to add information when the relevant time uh, comes around. You find that a number of times the students participate in discussion forums. So the instructor needs to be available to post uh, comments or to correct misconceptions around the topics that are being discussed in the course. You can also have real-time question and answer sessions held as a synchronous review sessions using uh, the instant chat features, but you can also do a synchronous discussion uh, session in the discussion forums. It's possible in many of our learning management uh, systems. You can also add questions that lead to directed reading and writing, such as well-framed discussion questions or essay questions within the written assignments. You can add this early in the course uh, design process so that as the students work through the content, they'll find these questions. They are leading questions, leading them to think deeper into the material that they're reading at that particular uh, point in time. So this is a brief on tips for designing uh, online courses. And this is a first in a series of short uh, tutorials like this for us to share experiences and share ideas about uh, designing online courses uh, in, in, in the, in the the next tutorials that I'll be capturing, I'll be sharing the templates that we use for planning our blended courses before we upload them onto the Macquarie University learning environment, and also our template that we use for uploading our blended courses into the learning management system. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, we have these reference links if you want to read up more on some of the tips for designing online courses and to do further reading on, on blended learning, on online course design, on quality in online learning, you can use those. So thank you very much for uh, watching.